Hi everyone! In this video we'll look at Skahoi's recent integration with Panasonic switchers. And today we'll look at the AVHS410 switcher from Panasonic. It already has an interface, but it's also useful to be able to um, remote control this from an auxiliary panel or even a actual switching panel like the FLY Pro from Skahoi. We are also looking into some of the larger switches from Panasonic like the um, 600, uh, 6000 series, but that will be for a later video. So today we have the Airfly Pro and one of our newer controllers, the Rack Fly Trio, which has 60, 70, 72 buttons, four-way buttons, RGB colored, OLED legends all over the place. A pretty amazing panel for an auxiliary panel for this switcher. Now, in this video, my um, goal is to give you an idea about the scope of integration. The Panasonic switches doesn't give us control of everything, but a lot of useful things are available to us. And if first we look at what the basis of this is, then I'll just briefly take a look at the uh, protocol document we have followed. It is um, this one from Panasonic. And what you need to notice is that the switcher has to have an extension called HS410 underscore IF. And uh, if it has that, then we can connect to it. Of course, the IP address and everything has to be set up correctly. If we go to page number eight, you also see what kind of commands we can support on this one. So you can see we can um, control the uh, bus cross points. We can also um, get information about how routing is currently done. Then we can do a uh, cut and auto transitions and we can choose uh, patterns for wipes. We can also set some um, status and breathe status for picture in picture. And um, we can set a number of the transition times. So that's kind of the scope of things we can do. It also means that in a sense, it's a little bit weird to uh, com um, to pair a panel like the Airfly Pro with the uh, Panasonic switcher since the T-bar is not operational. We can actually not send a transition position over to the switcher. So um, in, in th there you basically see the limitations. But then again, the question is if the Airfly Pro is the obvious choice for controlling this one or if you are more looking in the category of an auxiliary panel, I will let that be up to you, but now let's look at the features we have. So first, let's uh, take a look at the Airfly Pro and how we have made a default configuration for this one. So we can um, take a look at the features found on this panel. And we have set up a row of uh, preview program, very classic. Uh, we can select sources here uh, as we want. And uh, if we look at the Panasonic switcher, you can see that now input source number three is selected for preview over here. It is following. And I change now to input number four. And we also see this is changing over here. Now let's make a change to this panel and select input number two. And it is reflected on the Airfly Pro. So of course we have duplex communication going two way street. We like that because it really sucks when you can only send commands somewhere and are totally in the blind about the state of the other device. That's horrible for a um, system integrator like me. So uh, obviously we have a shift key that gives us access to additional things here. Um, and the labels are coming out of the protocol document, so they are fixed for the product. And you see how it affects this row of buttons here. Now, this line of buttons up here has been assigned to um, whichever sources you choose from the select up here. So there you can select which bus you will be operating. Uh, are you going to operate the uh, key fill, key source, key, uh, downstream key? fill and source, picture and picture source and so forth. And if I use the shift key over here, you can see I have access to auxiliary one up to four, bus A and bus B by these buttons right here. So if I chose auxiliary four, and then I am now able to also use the shift key to access uh, sources uh, here uh, directly using these buttons. In this section over here, I have cut and auto, of course, and then I have frames, uh, transition speeds, and you may think transition speeds on a button. Well, these are four-way buttons, as you undoubtedly must know if you have followed us just for, for a little time, because we uh, are able with a four-way button to use the edges of the button to act like an encoder, for instance. So look at the display here, and as I'm pressing the edge, you can see I'm increasing and decreasing the frame rate of fade to black, and over here, the frame rate of the auto transition down here. 
Um, I think if we go over to the transition state, because this little selector has been set up, so this section of buttons are either uh, uh, sending a cut on auto command to Kia picture and picture one and two or downstream Kia, or it can set frame rates. So again, if I use the sides of the button here, I'm adjusting frame rates. Uh, if I uh, press and hold on the upper edge, I get course adjustments, and now I go by 10 frames at a time. If I press and hold the lower edge, I'm resetting, which is kind of standard behavior for these four-way button configurations. And now back to the keys here, where I can key stuff on and off. Uh, so that's also the case down here. That's basically what we can do. Uh, all the bus operations that we would like to, we can cut auto, we can set transition speeds. And then of course, yeah, there were some uh, DVE settings. I didn't implement all of those, but I'll do so on request. So please let us know if this is useful to you and we'll consider that as well. But now I want to focus our attention to the other panel I brought today, which is the um, Rackfly Trio. And both of these configurations are default configurations. So you'll be so lucky to get this out of the box if you want and then you can modify from there which is a very powerful way of working with our controllers download default configuration so you are started up super quickly and then you'll soon want to tweak things and then you log into our web interface and you can do that by drop down boxes i think i'll show you that so um if we go to the configuration page for the um um, let me just see here. Yes, for the Rackfly Trio, you see that uh, all these buttons can be picked. So I can pick any of these, like C1, and then I can see what is the actions assigned to that, that button. But now we have the panel here in front of us. Actually, the panel is a little bit dim to you right now, and that's because it has screensaver mode on it, which will dim down the panel. And in bright light studio like this one, it uh, almost looks like it's turned off. But actually, if you'll, you'll notice, if I press any of these buttons, then light is brought back into the panel and in the OLED displays. We are doing that to save your hardware so it can last even longer and be of use for you in many, many years. But let's first look at what we put into this panel. Again, I have a row of buttons selecting sources for buses, and those buses can be adjusted by a button over here. So I decided to use memory B and memory A to set which bus is uh, adjusted here. Now, this comes up with the number. So number one or zero is bus A. But again, this is like a four-way button. Now I'm bus B. I am now at the program bus and I'm on the preview bus. As I am um, cycling through here, you can see that these labels are changing. That should be pretty clear to see. Now, as we saw on the Rackfly, uh, sorry, the Airfly Pro, we have um, more sources that we can fit into a row of 12 buttons. Now here we have 24 buttons, but we also spent two buttons over here on shift key and bus selection. So, um, no matter how we put it, and we have more than 50 sources on this guy, we actually need shift levels, even more shift levels. And in this case, we made the shift key over here a toggle key that functions in two ways. If you toggle on the lower edge, you kind of go between um, uh, all the cross points um, sources here. And if you toggle in here, then you have standard input sources. You can see it starts over here, input one and so forth. And uh, so it's toggling uh, between those and uh, uh, you can see in the displays, again, what are the labels. Then to access special sources, if you press the upper edge of this one, you actually have on the last nine keys uh, additional sources that didn't fit into the two by uh, two times 22 sources that would otherwise fit. And thereby you have access to actually every single source in the switcher by means of the toggle function on the edges of this key. We did the same down here. We also colored this differently. And then finally, if you look at the rest of the panel, much of that is um, kind of uh, demonstrating what could also be done, not necessarily what you want to do. Up here, again, we have a selection of buttons that will do frame rate adjustments on the various kinds of transition uh, speeds, uh, auxiliary one transition, uh, picture in picture transition, and so forth. And uh, then I put in a few buttons here for doing the brightness of the panel. So actually you can see I can dim down the panel by using this. That is going to be very useful if you are in a control room. And then finally we have a shift key that is cycling through the functions of this one. Now this section is selecting patterns and those patterns doesn't match the patterns in the switch at this point. They are surely some that you would need to tweak. And I guess that you don't want to have access to all, I don't know what, 80 patterns in this switch. You're likely to want to work with a few of them, which 
are relevant to you. And I suggest that you upload your own icon to the panel. So uh, even though this standard configuration will get you started out of the box, then you probably want also to uh, tweak it quite uh, quickly. For instance, putting in new icons for the relevant patterns you'll be using for wipes. And then the final section over here is also one of those where I really want to invite you to uh, customize. It is simply six buttons that I chose to route black program preview, multi-view, key out or clean to auxiliary number one. That's what you see in the displays. And then I even went so far that I painted two of these buttons with red and green because uh, I wanted to kind of indicate on the buttons that, hey, this is program, this is preview, those sources uh, has this kind of color convention that we wanted to use on those keys. See, that's the main thing related to the um, uh, Panasonic switch itself. Now we want to take a brief look at how these things are configured. So the, the actions that you can expect from the configuration system. And we already loaded up button C1. And C1 on the panel, um, is set up to um, be the cross point action um, for this device core. You can see we have one called program and preview and program preview. Those would be the easy choice if you want to do a configuration like on the Airfly Pro, where on that row of buttons, we simply did that. Uh, we can quickly see the Airfly Pro configuration right here because I already loaded it in. So if you look at uh, a preview button, you can see that we assigned the preview action to this one for input number one, or if we hold down the shift key for input 13. Now this is classic Skahoy configuration of a vision mixing panel. So no surprises on that one. If we look at this panel over here, it's a bit more tricky because we decided to use memory A and B to select the bus for those buttons, meaning that the destination is really chosen by the value stored in memory A. Memory A is a memory cell we can set the value for, and um, the, the value in that memory cell de defines basically which of these sources that would otherwise be specifically picked, like um, uh, bus A, B, program preview, key, fill, uh, downstream key source, etc., would be chosen. Now, uh, and then of course we use the shift divider to uh, create a shift level to access, uh, in this case, input source number one. So all the inputs you can see are those you also find in the document and all the uh, buses you can choose are those that you also find in the protocol document from Panasonic. So that's the basic thing of most of the buttons on this panel. Looking at how to set the transition up here, you can see that the transition time has its own action. We also have one for bus transition. It's, it's kind of totally the same. And then in this special case, we convert the four-way button into a pulsed unit or pulsed element like a, an encoder by adding the false HVC type and choosing pulsed. It means that four-way button functionality uh, is now translated into positive and negative pulses as you press the edges of the button, which will then increase or decrease the frame rate that is uh, set by the action auto transition time in this case and where you can select uh, between the various types of uh, buses that will be affected by this action. Um, you can go study how this uh, button A11 works. That's the one that had the panel brightness. It also had, uh, I didn't mention, but it has IP setup and something called panel force global color. But that's beyond the scope of this video to, to go into. Looking at this one, it's interesting to see how did we make a button with a graphic on, like uh, for selecting the uh, patterns here. And that is really done by, uh, you have all the patterns you can select from uh, here. And then we add an action called local graphic, which will pick up a local graphic stored in the controller at compile time. So there you need to go to our server and upload a new graphic and it gets into your firmware and you can pick it from this selector box. And then uh, moving on to the last uh, section over here, you can see they are super simple because these six buttons are really just uh, routing one source directly to a fixed output source. So if, for instance, uh, a bus cross point, we choose auxiliary number one as the bus, we just route black, okay? And then on the next one, we do the same, but then I added, because I wanted to paint that button specially, red as the color of the button, green as the color of the button down here, and then multi-view for a, uh, 22. The final thing you might want to know is that how does these shift keys and memory um, keys over there work actually? And then if you uh, click on these buttons, you can see how, um, again, I use the force HVC type to turn a 
four-way button into a pulsed element that will then feed into the one called cycle memory and cycle memory will allow me to go through the various options uh, the bus numbers so now it becomes a little bit tricky um, but that's what happens on this one and the other shift key uses something called transform four-way behavior to make sure that I detect the down edge and the upper edge and in each cases I deliver a shift level action that sets either shift level one or shift level two in a toggle fashion. Sometimes we use shift keys, and I think I did that on the Airfly Pro over here. We use the shift key on the Airfly Pro as a hold down shift key. So for as long as I hold it down, it has its value, then I release again, it falls back. Over here, we made it a toggle key. So with this introduction, you have also seen a lot of Skaho infrastructure, like uh, using forcing uh, um, hardware component type from four-way button to encoder to uh, also select edges for four-way button. We have looked at how colors can be used to paint the panel. And then, of course, we have looked at the actions in question, namely communicating with the Panasonic switcher for an auxiliary panel or even a vision mixing panel like this. It's all default configurations for you, but please always consider that you can go beyond that. And it's so easy to do by just logging into the web interface and then modifying. So you get the exact customized solution that you need to make your productions as user-friendly and as error-free as they can be. So I hope you like that. And I hope you'll consider using these panels to um, make integrations with Panasonic switches even more powerful. <laughs>